and good evening. I'm Devakar Vash, and I'm a robotics researcher. I work with people who are one of the best brains in making robot in the country. And with those people around us, we make some of the coolest robots that the world has ever seen. We have made something called Manav, and Manav is India's first completely made in India robot. All the parts of this robot has been made, manufactured, designed, and assembled here in India itself. And it is a technological masterpiece. We've also made something called Samarth, which is the world's first and the only completely brain-controlled wheelchair. This is for people. <laughs> this is made for people who have full body paralysis. People who can see every single thing, who can understand every single thing, but are not able to do anything. And they are completely bed-bound. They can't even talk to you. Imagine getting into their thoughts and then controlling a wheelchair just by thinking. How miraculous is that? And that's what we have achieved. And again, it has been done for the first time here in the day itself. If I talk about the innovation, we'll just keep on going. As uh, he told, we have made something called brain cloning and this and that. Our robots are serving on the borders of the country. Th there are a lot of things that I can talk about. But today, we'll be talking about something different, something new, something really close to my heart. So it starts from a date around two years ago. I was invited by AIMS, which is All India Institute of Medical Sciences, to talk about this wheelchair. So we took this wheelchair over there, and we talked all about the wheelchair and how this works, and what is the technology, how the AI works, how the machine learning works, how every single thing in this wheelchair works. Then I met a doctor over there, and we did some brainstorming, and we said, hey, if we can get into the brain of the people and understand what they are thinking at this point of time, we can actually go ahead and do a lot of different things to enable people to get ahead in the field of medical sciences. I said, why not bring it on? So we went ahead and I saw a ward called Neuroscience Ward. Neuroscience Ward looks something like this. Now this is not the place where anyone wants to be. This is a place, this is, in other words, an ICU, intensive care unit. Now, what you can see is, on the center of it, you can see a computer-like thing, a big, clunky 1980s type computer right there. Now, this is called a ventilator. Now, ventilator, what it does is, this is basically the core of every single ICU. What it does is, it gives the patient the air which is required for him to breathe. In cases where patients are not able to breathe at all, or in the cases when, where the patients are not able to breathe properly. So this device, what it does, it pumps in air in the right quantity, at the right time, and with the right pressure to the patient so that they can breathe normally. Now, when we talk about this machine, this is a very sophisticated machine. This is one of the technological masterpieces that we are living along with. Now, let's go a little closer to how this looks like. This is how a traditional ventilator looks like. It's around this big, uh, this uh, tall, and it's around this big. So it's it's quite a big thing. And this one, this specific ventilator, are generally used in most of the big hospitals at this point of time. Now, when we look at the stats of the ventilator, so this is a WHO uh, stats which we are looking at, and this is primarily based around India itself. And what you can see is the orange bars, which includes the deaths, which are related to COPD, lower respiratory infections, preterm birth issues, and tuberculosis. They all account to around 2 million people who die every single year in India itself. We are just talking about statistics of India itself. And all of these people can be saved by a ventilator. So, as we talk, someone somewhere in our country would be taking his last breath of his life because he couldn't get a ventilator to live on. And it is, according to the statistics, around 5,479 people die every single day because of a lack of a ventilator. Well, that's not a very big problem to solve. We take a ventilator and put all these ventilators all throughout the country. Right? Wrong. 
These ventilators are very expensive. A single ventilator can cost between 5 to 15 lakh rupees. And not only that, these ventilators require advanced uh, systems. They, are, they need trained personnel, trained doctors to control it, which no doubt are very expensive. Again, when we talk about this ventilator, it needs oxygen supply. Now, oxygen supply can cost to around 3,000 to 6,000 rupees a day. And along with that, obviously, there are field safe measures, there are other uh, things which are attached to the ventilator for a person to survive on. So this is a very expensive proposition. And just to let you know, if a person is admitted in a good hospital, in an ICU bed or a ventilator bed, the mean cost is close to 50 to 60,000 rupees per day. It can go up to around 1 lakh rupees a day. Now, when we move on and we see another statistic, which will show that there are, these are the, this is the distribution of people on how much time they spent on a ventilator till they are discharged. So as you can see, most of the people, which is around 40 to 43%, spend around 10 to 15 days on a ventilator. Take a cost of around 70,000 rupees, they're spending every single day for 10 to 15 days. That's around 10 lakh rupees approximately that they have to spend to stay alive. Think about our country. Think about countries like us, which are developing, which want to race with the world. And then we have this, where people are dying because of a lack of a technology. Something needs to be done. Something needs to change this. And that's why we brainstormed and we thought about making a solution, making something which can solve this problem, which can reduce or maybe completely eradicate this problem. And that's when we started making a ventilator. Now, when we talk about our ventilator, it is quite a unique product. So this is the world's smallest ventilator, and it is smaller by a factor of 350 times. This is not 350%, we are talking about 350 times smaller. So I can literally keep it in my pocket and go anywhere where I want. Think how much of a mobility that would add to the people. If a person wants to move, if a person wants to go back home, he can't carry this big of a ventilator along with him. But if a ventilator can be carried in his pocket, he has an added advantage. He can be mobile. He can move here and there. He can enjoy his life at least a little bit. Moving on, not only the size is uh, important because of the mobility, but it is also important because of disaster relief. We might have heard about a lot of epidemics. And in those cases, a lot of patients, they come through, especially in the winters and in certain seasons, uh, there, are, uh, there is a huge rise in the number of cases of respiratory diseases. And when it happens, none of the hospitals are prepared to take on that many patients at that point of time. If you have a very small ventilator that you can stack up, maybe in a room or maybe in a big carton, and disperse it whenever or wherever you want, that can help a lot of things. Not only this, but if in a case where epidemic is somewhere away from the resource-rich area, like, for example, the metro cities, for example, if we talk about areas which are remote, which are not very well connected, you can ship these ventilators very easily as compared to the conventional ventilator. So size plays a very important factor when it comes to a ventilator. Then we move on. It's the world's smartest ventilator, trust me. When we started making this ventilator, we made sure that every single part of this ventilator is super easy to use and does not require any kind of training whatsoever. Because we are already working on artificial intelligence and machine learning, we put that technology out from our robots and into this ventilator. And what it enabled us was that you do not need a doctor or any medical expert to control a ventilator like this. As you can see from the covering of this ventilator, there are no buttons, there are no switches, 
There is nothing to control in this ventilator. You put it on the, to the patient, it analyzes, it understands how the patient is breathing, how he needs the oxygen, it understands the user pattern, and based on that, controls itself automatically. So you don't need to ha ever have to control it in your life. And if at any point of time, in certain cases, even if you have to control it in some very difficult circumstances, then also it's super duper easy. Because it can be controlled by a mobile application. So this is the kind of mobile application which we are talking about. And it is Bluetooth enabled. So all you need is an Android mobile phone. You open up the app, connect it to the ventilator, and control every single functionality of the ventilator just by your Android mobile phone. Because it is connected to your mobile phone, we have an added advantage. If at any point of time a patient is behaving in a way in which it, he shouldn't be, then automatically an alert is sent to the nears and dears that there is something which is going wrong and you must attend the patient nearby. That is a completely new feature that is not there in any of the ventilators. Not only this, this ventilator at any point of time, if you're not able to control this ventilator, if there's any problem in the ventilator, what would you do? Because it is a question of your life, of the patient's life. What should he or she do? And what if they are again in an area which is not so resource, uh, resource rich? In that case, you can simply call our institute or our office and we can take over the control of your ventilator, whether you are in any part of the world, and we can understand, get the data, and control it remotely for you. We went to the roots of the problem. What was the biggest problem? How can we solve it? We have removed one problem by making it very, very small, we have removed another problem by making it super easy so that you don't have to pay a doctor any visiting charges or you don't have to call someone to take care of that person. The biggest problem right now is that all the ventilators need oxygen cylinder. We might have heard about cases where because of lack of oxygen cylinder, people have died. Now, it won't be the case because this is the world's first ventilator which can work without the supply of oxygen. Think about it. It can be taken anywhere. It is super small. It, is, it does not require any kind of medical assistance, and it doesn't need oxygen. This is the type of technology which we're trying to build. Because we have got down to the ward. We have got down not only to doctors, but to nurses, to the family members. We have understood their problem. And we have tried to solve it by the latest in technology. And we have directly taken the technology which we have developed from robotics, we have learned from robotics and put it down to the small little ventilator that we have. Going even further, the magic just doesn't end here. When we talk about this ventilator, obviously, you might be thinking, this is too good. Tell me the price of this ventilator, right? I'm glad to announce that this ventilator is around 100 times cheaper than any conventional ventilator in the, in the planet right now. And it is only costing around 15,000 rupees. There was a person who met me a few days back, actually a month or so back. And he said, you know, Mr. Devakar, you're not a good businessman. I said, so be it. But why are you saying that? He said, sir, five lakh ka ventilator milta hai. A ventilator costs five lakh rupees at the minimum. Even if you sell this ventilator for 50,000 rupees, maybe 30,000 rupees, people will buy it. I said, yes, certainly they will. But why don't you sell it for that much? I said, listen, till the time we are talking right now, there would be a person who would be dying because of a lack of a ventilator. What we want to achieve is to give life to people who earlier would not have got access to this kind of ventilator. 
we want to take the technology. Making technology is not a big thing. We do it every single day. In the research lab, there are so many technologies that are being invented. But what matters is what gets down to the people. And that's what we are going to do. And that's what we are doing. We are taking robotics, we are taking technologies, and we are making them in such a manner that everyone can take a taste of it. Everyone can utilize it. And everyone can be benefited by it. And that's what we are trying to do with our ventilator. And with this ventilator, with this ventilator, we are just not looking at India. As we always say, we are making technologies here in India with love for the world. Thank you.